Thanks to the holidays and with me being a little under the weather last week, I wasn't able to get this video out before the end of the year. However, these games deserve some attention and recognition for going above and beyond in a year that was already packed with some of the best games of the decade. So regardless if I'm a little late and if this video does really bad, today I want to dive down into my personal top 10 best games of 2023. Keep in mind that this list is just my personal opinion, and as a matter of fact, you guys should hit up the comments and let me know what your list is. Before that though, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more video game ranking videos like this one. Also, hit that like button if you really enjoyed today's topic. Oh, and I need to address something real quick. There is an honorable mention for a game that I didn't have time to finish, and because of that, I didn't feel comfortable about including it on my personal top 10. For that reason, I'm at least going to give it an honorable mention. As to why I'm doing that, well, we'll get to that later on and hopefully you'll understand my decision. Anyway, my name is Ruben with Nerdspace Games and this is my top 10 best video games of 2023. Let's get it. Number 10, Octopath Traveler 2. Octopath Traveler 2 is the perfect game for fans of that traditional turn-based JRPG style of games that we all grew up with. With similarities to classic Final Fantasy and other games of the genre, of course it was a game that I instantly fell in love with. However, what really makes Octopath Traveler 2 stand out compared to other games of 2023 with similar styles comes down to the story. Sure, Sea of Stars was another phenomenal traditional JRPG, but the story of Octopath Traveler 2 just sets it apart completely in my own opinion. Just like the original game, Octopath Traveler 2 sets up 8 unique main characters that have their own unique stories throughout the game. As a player, you choose a starting character. Then, while setting out to complete that character's story, you also find the other main characters and complete their story as well. Each of them brings a unique tech with incredible storytelling, dialogue, and side characters that it's just really hard to not immediately fall in love with this game. From a girl looking to recover her lost memories to a prince betrayed by his own brother, each story in this game will leave you satisfied with the individual journeys you'll take with each of these eight characters in Octopath Traveler 2. Number 9, Dead Space Remake. Going into the release of Dead Space Remake, I gotta say my expectations were kind of low. EA has proven to be hit or miss with some of its games and Motive didn't really have much of a track record going into this project. However, I'm happy to say that Motive definitely did not disappoint us with this remake. Dead Space Remake is one of the few remakes that I would agree is better than the original game. Obviously, there are the most obvious improvements with the remake such as graphics and visuals, However, what really impresses me about this remake is that Motive actually set out to add plenty of new features to help improve an already incredible game. Some of the biggest improvements include adding voice lines to Isaac Clarke, introducing side quests, and even adding a new feature that allows more unpredictability with necromorphs randomly popping up when you least expect it. The game was a true sci-fi horror experience. The sound designs always kept the players on their toes, the variety of weapons gave players multiple different ways to kill aliens, and the segments with zero gravity felt fluent and easy to maneuver compared to the original game. Hell, even the boss fight against the Leviathan was much better this time around. Overall, Dead Space Remake was a masterpiece and it will probably go down as one of the best remakes in video game history. I just can't wait to see Motive tackle Dead Space 2 now. Number 8, Lies of P. In recent years, I've slowly become more interested in Soulsborne games. Actually, I like to really thank Elden Ring for that. Since then, I've played Sekiro and even Demon's Souls Remake. However, this year, I actually attempted to play a lot more of them, from Lords of the Fallen to Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. But nothing was more fun and more impressive to play than Lives of P. Since we have yet to hear anything about a remake or sequel for Bloodborne, chances are that Lives of P may just be the closest thing we'll get to that. Picking inspiration from games like Bloodborne and other Soulsborne games, Lies of P follows Pinocchio, a puppet battling other puppets in a steampunk type apocalyptic world. Humans are now on the brink of extinction and it's up to Pinocchio to discover the secrets that lie behind this tragedy. Lies of P introduces plenty of unique and visually impressive enemies. The difficulty of course mirrors that of other Soulsborne games as the combat challenges the player to time their dodges and find the small windows to attack and slay their opponents. Pinocchio's arm allows them to have unique abilities like puppet strings to pull enemies closer to you or a shield to deflect some incoming damage. And while the gameplay is phenomenal, the lore and storytelling of Lives of P rivals that of most Soulsborne games. With multiple endings determined by the decisions that you make as Pinocchio to discover some twists and turns that will catch you off guard, Lies of P is one of the most exciting Soulsborne games I've ever played. 
Oh, and let's not forget about the music. In case you missed my video on best soundtracks of 2023, Lysa P is my personal video game soundtrack of 2023. So obviously, the music is incredible. Number 7, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Speaking of a game that took some inspiration from Soulsborne Combat, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is the sequel to one of the best single player Star Wars games ever, Fallen Order. Yet without a doubt, Jedi Survivor is far superior to Fallen Order in just about every single way. Before I go on though, I do need to address the elephant in the room. Yes, I know the condition of this game was not great when it first released, especially on PC. However, since then the game has gone through extensive repairs and patches and personally, I played it on the PS5 and I didn't have as many issues as others. Still, this game did get a lot of heat and it definitely deserved the negative criticism it got. But doesn't take away from the core mechanics, gameplay, and the story of Jedi Survivor. If you were like me and you were able to play through the game despite the technical issues, then you would have been treated to one incredible Star Wars video game. Starting with the story, there were multiple twists and turns that I guarantee you wouldn't see coming completely. At least not in the form of how you would expect it. Plus the cameos here were pretty great. From famous Star Wars icons to a battle against a fucking rancor, Jedi Survivor kept on delivering fan service throughout the entire game. What really sets this game apart from its predecessor though, is the gameplay in the open world. While most worlds feel linear similar to how they were in Fallen Order, some worlds, most importantly the hub world, are far from what we experience in the original game. With so many different areas to explore and side quests that lead to some awesome moments, Jedi Survivor is without a doubt one of the best Star Wars games ever. And let's not forget the traditional and non-traditional Jedi stances that you can take advantage of in Jedi Survivor. From the non-traditional blaster stance to the famous double blade stance, you have five options to choose from, each with their own unique skill tree. And for those that didn't try this game at release, well lucky for you, it is now in a state that is fully enjoyable with little to no glitches and lags. Have fun and uh, may the force be with you. Number 6, Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy is a game that fans of Harry Potter have been asking for for a really long time. An open world RPG set in the wizarding world. I mean this should have been done a long time ago but for some reason there were so many failed attempts at this that it was actually Avalanche software that finally delivered exactly what fans were looking for. Hogwarts Legacy puts you into the shoes of a fifth year student of Hogwarts. However, you might as well be a first year since technically you were found out to be a wizard or witch late in your life, meaning you have little to no experience in magic. So you have to learn the basics of charms and spells all within a single year while also battling in ancient darkness. Hogwarts Legacy does everything that you could ask for from an RPG set in the wizarding world. A fully customizable character, being sorted into your favorite house, attending classes and completing side quests, and building up your skills as a wizard while learning defensive spells and even, if you choose to do so, unforgivable curses. Hell, you can even befriend magical bees and fly on some of them, or you can actually fly around on a broomstick. Hogwarts Legacy opens the door for an almost perfect Harry Potter RPG. If only they included Quidditch, then this game would literally be perfect in my book. Still, with so many different spells, counters, and curses to use to your advantage during combat, Hogwarts Legacy offers fans of the Harry Potter franchise a chance to become the ultimate wizard or witch of Hogwarts. Number 5, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It really shouldn't surprise most people to see Tears of the Kingdom crack the top 5, even if it was a year of incredible games. While the graphics may not be on par with many games on this list, Zelda is still a beloved franchise and Tears of the Kingdom is the perfect follow up to Breath of the Wild. As always, the player controls Link as he sets out to rescue Zelda and save Hyrule. Only this time, instead of Hyrule being the only world to explore, Tears of the Kingdom introduces three explorable maps. Hyrule of course, the surface area, the sky world, and the underworld. Tears of the Kingdom needed to do a lot more to up the ante against Breath of the Wild and what better way to do that than introducing two more worlds similar in size to the game. On top of that, I find the story of Tears of the Kingdom to be much more interesting and exciting compared to that of Breath of the Wild. With more mystery and hidden secrets to explore in this game, Tears of the Kingdom is a traditional Zelda experience that will keep the player intrigued throughout the entire experience. Not to mention that Tears of the Kingdom introduces plenty of new features allowing it to feel different compared to its predecessor. From being able to build vehicles and structures, 
with the Ultra Hand and Auto Build abilities to being able to fly through surfaces above you with the new Ascent ability, my personal favorite. Tears of the Kingdom finds new ways to make an old franchise feel fresh. With these unique abilities comes a variety of new puzzles, by the way, and ways to solve them, which have always been my favorite part of Zelda games. Between the beautiful soundtrack, the enormous open world that expands into three unique areas, and the storytelling involved in this game, Tears of the Kingdom is easily in the top five best games of 2023 and makes a strong case for being one of the best Zelda games ever made. And that's coming from someone who loved Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker more than Breath of the Wild. Number four, Resident Evil 4 Remake. And of course, I had to include the Resident Evil game of the year on this list, although it might shock you guys to see at number four instead of say number one. I won't say too much about my love for Resident Evil since you guys really should know that already, especially since 90% of my content on this channel is on this franchise. With that being said though, when I first played the original Resident Evil 4, I was slightly disappointed, mainly because of the new direction the franchise took. But years later, obviously my feelings about that have changed. While the original game is still not one of my favorites of the franchise, it still breaks the top 6 to top 7 territory for me at the very least. And despite my feelings of the original game, I was very much excited for the remake. And I gotta say, I was pretty impressed. Sure, Capcom didn't deliver on everything, but in more cases than not, I found myself enjoying this version over the original. The characters have been improved to the point where some of them, like Luis, had better backstories. The combat allowed players to move around while aiming and introduced one of my favorite new features with the knife. While the knife was overpowered in the original game, the introduction of a few new features to it in this game made it more exciting to use. For example, you can now perform stealth kills or parry attacks with it at the cost of potentially breaking it. It added a new layer to Resident Evil 4 and it is hands down one of my favorite new features in this game. Plus, with the addition of new guns and a variety of new ways to take down enemies, the game became even more fun to play than the original. While the story is still that of an action movie where the hero has to rescue the president's daughter, what really sets Resident Evil 4 Remake apart from so many other games on this list comes down to just how much fun it is to play. Out of every game on this list, Resident Evil 4 Remake is probably my most replayed game of the year. I've played this game all the way through at least 12 times since it was released, which is insane to think about. Add that to the iconic boss fights and one of the best DLCs ever made with Separate Ways Remake, it's hard to argue against Resident Evil 4 Remake at least making the top 5 games of 2023. Hell, I can see why some of you guys might even push for it to be closer to the top. Number 3, Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Believe it or not, this game was my most anticipated game of 2023 coming into the year, even more so than Alan Wake 2 or Resident Evil 4 Remake mainly just because of how much I love Marvel, Spider-Man, and Miles Morales. The story in those games really set up a truly incredible cinematic experience that cannot be rivaled by any superhero game. Yes, even the Arkham games. Come at me, bro. However, with high expectations comes a higher chance of being disappointed. Luckily, Marvel Spider-Man 2 did not disappoint me in the slightest. The gameplay, despite already being near perfect in the first game, was even better. Getting the opportunity to portray not one but two Spider-Man allowed a different gameplay experience throughout Marvel's Spider-Man 2. You could play as Peter as he used his symbiote abilities to wreak carnage on his enemies, or you could play as Miles and use stealth pickdowns or electricity to clear the area quickly. Both characters offered unique ways to take down the bad guys of New York City. From a story perspective, there was so much to love considering that the game introduced multiple subplots that even rivaled the main story of the game. For example, Peter Parker battling with wanting to save the world as Peter instead of Spider-Man, and Miles fighting against his feelings of hate and wanting revenge against Martin Lee. Both showcased two inner struggles within both Spider-Man. Not to mention that the side quests introduced some really cool teases to the future. I'm not going to say too much about it because I don't want to get into spoiler territory, but I'll just say that the flame quest line is a must play side quest. On top of that, with new gadgets and tools like the spider wings to some really creative boss fights against iconic Spider-Man villains like Sandman and Mysterio, this game has everything you want from a Spider-Man game and more. And I did all of that without mentioning Venom and Kraven, both of which were fucking awesome in this game. Enough said. Number 2, Final Fantasy 16. So I gotta admit, I'm kind of a new Final Fantasy fan. I mean, I've played a few of them like Final Fantasy VII Remake and some of the Final Fantasy games on the Pixel Remaster, but prior to Final Fantasy 16, that's pretty much all I've played. 
However, I absolutely love Final Fantasy 16 to the point that it motivated me to revisit the franchise and play through every game of the series, even though I know in terms of the gameplay, they're not very that similar at all. And I know this game gets a lot of heat because of how much it pulls away from its roots. With that being said, as someone who is a fan of the Kingdom Hearts games and the combat involved over there, Final Fantasy 16 is right up my wheelhouse, guys. The combat, while not as impressive as, say, Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3, is really exciting and offers new ways to approach enemies within the game. Thanks to the icons, the main character Clive learns new elemental abilities to help enhance his arsenal. From wind based quick attacks to extremely powerful AoE attacks by the Phoenix, Clive has it all. Combining different abilities with different attacks will help you personally find the perfect style of combat that fits you. What I really love about Final Fantasy 16 though is the story. Heavily inspired by Game of Thrones, the story focuses on different empires of Valestia battling for control over Mother Crystals, a resource for magic within Valestia. Watching different characters die in the name of power and betray loved ones for the sake of riches or status brings to life a darker and more sinister Final Fantasy world. As a fan of Game of Thrones, watching this darker take on Final Fantasy was exciting for me and it kept me guessing as to who was going to live, who was going to die, and who could we trust as an ally. Not to mention that Final Fantasy 16 introduces some of the coolest cinematic boss fights like the one against Titan Lost or even the Dragon Ball Z meets Kaiju fight against Bahamut. All of these elements combine to make one of the most badass games of 2023. Honorable mention, Baldur's Gate 3. So I want to talk a little bit about Baldur's Gate 3, despite it not being on my top 10 games of the year list. And I want to explain why it's not. It's as simple as me just not having enough time to fully cover this game yet. It's a long, long game, and I just didn't have time to fully play through the main story yet. Still, obviously this game is sensational, even from the little bit of it I did play. Especially if you're a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, this game would surely be made with you in mind. With so many different storylines to explore and incredible character development within the game, this game is truly a masterpiece. Ultimately though, because I'm nowhere near completing it yet, I'm going to refrain from officially putting it on my top 10. And instead, I'm just going to give it a quick shout out here as an honorable mention. I guarantee that most lists will probably have this game in their top three, and I probably should, and I'm sure I'll get slammed in the comments for not including it on my list. But I'm just being real with you guys and saying that I haven't even come close to beating this game yet. So hopefully you guys understand where I'm coming from, as I'm trying to base this list of games that I played from start to finish in 2023, and with Baldur's Gate 3, I'm not quite there yet. Please, please, don't crucify me guys. Anyway, on to number one. My 2023 game of the year is Alan Wake 2. I love this game guys. As a horror fan, I really don't know how much more I could have asked for from Remedy in terms of a survival horror experience. Alan Wake 2 proved to not only be the best game of the year in my eyes, but also a better survival horror game than Resident Evil 4 Remake. Which honestly, it's crazy for someone like me to say considering how much I love Resident Evil. Still, Alan Wake 2 introduced some really incredible features to the genre while also staying faithful to the features that made a survival horror game a survival horror game. Let's start with the story. Alan Wake 2 allows the player to portray two different characters as they explore different worlds. As Saga Anderson, you explore the town of Bright Falls and the area around it. You'll battle the Taken while trying to solve different mysteries around Bright Falls. She'll have the use of her mind place to aid her on her investigation. The mind place does multiple different things, including allowing her to build a investigation wall in her mind to help her uncover different mysteries while also uncovering secrets that different characters are hiding deep within their minds. As Alan Wake, on the other hand, you'll explore a place known as the Dark Place. The Dark World takes the form of a sinister New York City with shadows roaming around the city trying to kill Alan. Alan is searching for a way out of the dark place so that he can return home back to his wife. He must use his powers of writing to form new storylines that will change the environment around him, creating new areas to explore. The gameplay takes a lot of inspiration from Resident Evil 2 Remake. You'll find different weapons and resources to use to your advantage, but you'll need to be careful as resources are extremely limited and the game is not very nice to players that blow all of their resources early on. Something unique about Alan Wake 2 compared to other survival horror games is that it actually explores the open world concept. Saga can explore three unique areas of Bright Falls, all of which hides collectibles like nursery rhymes in the form of puzzles and lunchboxes, while Alan can explore hotels and theaters within the dark world of New York City. 
between the innovation that this game takes within the genre, the exciting gameplay mechanics, the iconic music that will have you singing days after finishing the game, and the memorable storyline cliffhangers that leaves you begging for more. Alan Wake 2 is without a doubt one of the best horror games of not only 2023 but the decade, and it is my personal 2023 game of the year.